once upon a farm, there lived a widow and her two beautiful daughters. <laughs> they had a hard life on the farm. And they had many animals. They had a horse and a sheep named Mole and some pigs and, well, I think that one's just a cousin or something. Anyways, don't put it too much. Um, but the most impressive animal on their farm must have been the rooster Chanticleer. There was no one who could match his brilliant red feathers and he had the most beautiful voice. He had seven hen wives. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Maybe a little more than seven. I don't think he counts that often. But the one who he was madly in love with must have been Pertilote, a beautiful hen who he was in love with when she was only seven days old. They all lived happily on the farm, and there normally was no contention. But one day, Chanticleer had a terrible dream. terrifying monster with teeth and red eyes that looked a lot like a fox and it had come in the middle of the it had come and grabbed him around the neck and captured him and dragged him off no! and that was my dream i will not love a fool said perlo angrily <laughs> said Chanticleer as they engaged in an intelligent discussion. <laughs> well, there was also this dream, and um, nothing happened. It was just a dream. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> well, you know, there's a song. If you had a dream, 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 that Hector would be cream, cream, cream. Hector would have a little bit of a sure enough, he died that day. He died that day. <laughs> So Pertolo convinced him that absolutely nothing could come true from his dream and that he was being foolish for thinking so. So, one day, Chanticleer and his many, many interesting looking wives were out eating grain whenever he found it and he would always sing whenever he found the grain. You're beautiful! Anyways, so, <laughs> so they were all eating grain happily when he was singing at the top of his voice. <laughs> Until suddenly he saw, he saw a beautiful fluttering butterfly. Beautiful butterfly. I want to catch you and make you mine and I will name you a funny name that I can't think of right now, but I'll think of it later once I catch you. Come here. Come here. I'm going to catch you. He ah! wanted to catch the butterfly and he began to sing because he was so... Happy. Oh, beautiful butterfly, I want you to be my friend, I want you to be my friend, and I'm going to catch you and you'll be mine. And I'm he didn't you notice the scary beast and that was watching him. 
Suddenly, the butterfly left and flew off into the scary forest. Suddenly, Chanticleer saw the scary beast. <coughs> it was the beast lo that looked exactly like his from his nightmare. It was wolf-like, and it had... Okay, you wouldn't touch it. It was wolf-like, and it had scary red eyes and a wolfy nose. And it was angry. Don't... Don't be afraid. No, don't he be tried to soothe Chanticleer. I love your singing. That's all I want to listen to. My singing? You have a beautiful voice, much like your father's. Oh. How did the beast know what Chanticleer's voice sounded like? Chanticleer should have been suspicious, but he was just so over overcome with flattery hmm. that he didn't notice his crown hanging off his head, and that was a big thing for Chanticleer. <laughs> I will sing you another song, then, if you like it so very much. I got it, crow! Suddenly, the beast grabbed Chanticleer by, and put it mm, by the throat and carried him off into the scary forest. No, Chanticleer no, was stuck. No, 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 no. The beast had tricked him. Suddenly, Pertilote came up. When Pertilote heard Chanticleer's beautiful crowing, she came up to see where he was. Where are you, darling? Where'd you go? But to her dismay, she couldn't find him anywhere. She called all her sisters around her and let up a terrible shriek when she couldn't find him. <coughs> Predict <coughs> predicting the worst, that his dream had come true, which it had. <coughs> all the Barnard animals joined in the noise, and suddenly, there was even louder of a shriek. <coughs> The widow and her two daughters heard all the commotion from the barn. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, what's happening? What's going on? They saw the beast carrying Chanticleer into the forest from their window, and they decided that they had to follow him along with the rest of the farm. It was quite a sight. Oh no! Follow him! Get him! But, Ch but the beast was too far ahead of everyone <laughs> and had his back turned to them. And Chanticleer, being the smart chicken that he was, just told him, Well, Dear Beast, you've gotten me this far, and look at how far ahead that we are of all those people that are chasing us. I would be so very inclined to hear you brag to them about our distance and your fastness and <laughs> your awesomeness. You should just brag. Just go, man. Just go. Tis true. I am going to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> you fell for it! You fell for it! Really? Chanticleer took the opportunity to escape out of the beast's jaws. But the beast was not deterred yet. He said, Why don't you come down? We can talk about this. <laughs> oh, heck no! I already learned my lesson, which is... Chanticleer learned the lesson that he is not to be um, overcome by flattery and the beast would not, he would not be the beast dinner tonight. Ugh, I'm hungry. Never trust a flatterer, kids, and stay in school. <clears throat> the end. When Chanticleer returned to the farm, they did what most chickens do. They party. <laughs>